Welcome to episode 11 and this is our second to last episode in season one as we shut down for a Christmas, New Year, summer holiday break. We'll return in 2022 with lots of great guests. In the meantime, today we're going to give you another business like you and this is experiences from our business from our recent launch of the FAQ BT Business Growth Membership. We're looking at this as I suppose a bit of a failure to launch, but when we take the word fail as a first attempt in learning, there is plenty to learn from the experience and we see it wasn't really a failure, but rather a poor execution hampered by illness. Welcome to the FAQ Business Podcast for business owners covering four pillars, actionable education, inspiring leaders, businesses like you, and thought leadership where we challenge your thinking. Hosted by myself, Jane Tweedy, I'm founder and lead trainer of FAQ Business Training, where we want to avoid you getting ripped off or ripping yourself off. We'll feature an amazing diversity of guests with lots to educate and inspire you. Let's jump into today's episode of the FAQ Business Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jane Tweedy, founder and lead trainer of FAQ Business Training. During the Black Friday sales, we launched the FAQ BT Business Growth Membership. And to all extents and purposes, it was probably a bit of a failure to launch. However, do we see ourselves as a failure? Well, kind of. Kind of yes, kind of no. Let's look back on the start of FAQ Business Training and what led to the events that happened last week. So FAQ Business Training was launched in 2017. I started it because I was frustrated by the number of people who didn't know what they didn't know and were getting ripped off by providers like website hosts and that sort of thing, but they were also ripping themselves off because of things they didn't know about things like pricing. So I wanted to help them by filling in the gaps so that they didn't get ripped off as much as what they were. So a good intention. Initially when I started, I was providing just a few workshops and providing them through channels like the Business Connect service, through things like WordCamp, through speaking at their event. I was enjoying the experience and getting a lot of good feedback from people that they were really liking the way I broke things down and the way that I explained everything. And then they could actually use it in their business and actually achieve change, which was perfect. So I love that. And over time, I've grown. So the number of workshops I do each year is growing and growing. In October 2020, we had Small Business Month in New South Wales. For that, I did 18 events. 18! That's a crazy amount. But I really enjoyed being able to help as many people as I could. So obviously in 2020, we did about 80 events that year, 8-0. And all of this has given us a lot of content. So there's truckloads of information there. Always my intention was to create this into an online school and an online membership. That was always my intention because I have a personal mission that I want to help a million people succeed in their businesses or their careers on their terms. This is obviously going to need to be done through some sort of global platform and this is where the online school and the online membership certainly come into it as does things like the FAQ Business Podcast. However, like many, my business didn't really go to plan. Although I was presenting a lot of workshops, I was spending too much time in my day role, which was as a business advisor under the Business Connect program. So back in August 2019, I decided, right, I'm going to move over more to my own business. So what I did was I left my employee role five days a week and well, I think at that stage I'd actually cut down to three days a week and I switched it over to two days a week as a contractor. Well, that was the intention. Unfortunately, I still had quite a bit of remnant work to do with a number of clients. So that two days a week was really kind of three days, sometimes more. So what I thought, okay, I'd leave that to Christmas time, come back in the new year, particularly after I'd come back from a trip to New Zealand in February 2020. And I'd be able to focus all my attention on FAQ business training. 
But of course, what happened in early 2020? <sighs> COVID. So a global pandemic happened. And I didn't quite factor that in my plans. So anyway, what happened was my Business Connect role went from being meant to be two days a week up to a double full-time load. I was working from nine in the morning till nine at night, five days a week, plus Saturdays, pretty much nine to five. And it was cray cray. It was just back to back. Like there was like a minute between meetings. That's where the idea of the smart kettle came in because you could literally set it from your phone, quickly rush to the toilet, quickly grab the tea and come back to your desk, you know, all with that kind of a couple of minute turnaround. It was crazy. Unfortunately, you know, my business was taking the back seat again. So again, I thought, right, 2021, <laughs> new start, we're going to try again. And particularly with the idea of having all those courses from that I had actually done mostly myself through the October Small Business Month in 2020, I thought, right, I've got these as a bit of a starting point for my online school. And that was always their intention to put them up in the online school and have them available as a low level starting point. Because there are a lot of people that do a live webinar, translate it into what they call a masterclass, i.e. they just put the recording up as a masterclass and charge you like $99 for it. But I didn't agree with that. I didn't think that was the right thing to do. You don't get the benefit of being live and being able to ask questions and you don't get the polished nature of a course that's designed with steps to actually do during it. So I just considered it a lower offering. But unfortunately, you know, I just haven't had a chance to even get this up and running properly. What did I decide to do? I decided, right, I'm going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to take charge of my life and actually get things back on a roll. So I decided earlier in 2021 that I was going to hire an assistant. The year before I'd worked with someone named Cheryl on a Hawkesbury Women Back to Work program because my other business is a job search business and I ran a program for the council there and she was on it and I knew she would be a great person to have work for me. So anyway I reached out to her and I said hey Cheryl are you still thinking about starting work again but not quite got there yet where are you at? And she of course said yeah I'd be keen to have a discussion. So we met up and this was before the school holidays so this would have been in April, I think it was. So we met up before the school holidays with the intention, right, she would start work for me immediately after the school holidays. And of course, what happened? <laughs> we got announced as being in a two-week lockdown. So we thought, oh, well, two weeks. Okay, we'll wait two weeks and then we'll start. But of course, two weeks became three and a half months, four-month lockdown. So unfortunately, things were just getting delayed and delayed further. And I was getting more and more frustrated because I just wanted to get this thing off the ground. So eventually we called it quits and we said, right, stuff, we're not waiting for, you know, being able to do this face to face. We're just going to start online. And starting someone online is not that easy. And I know some of you have definitely done it over this period of time, but it wasn't that easy. She was using completely new programs that she was completely unfamiliar with and you know, trying to learn them all remotely, having no idea what my business was, what it was about or anything. So it was all a baptism by fire, really. She's harnessed that. She's done really well. But what it meant was being, and I've spoken about this in a prior episode about hiring someone, is that you are often the biggest bottleneck. And I certainly was the biggest bottleneck. And Particularly what was happening is because of what she was doing, I'd do a part of the puzzle, she'd do a part, I'd do a part, she'd do a part. And I was reluctant to give her that middle part because it was something that I know is does require a level of expertise that she, at this stage, I didn't feel was quite ready for. However, it was a case of get it done or not get it done. So eventually I had to make that call and go, you know what, just do it. I, if it needs to be fixed, I can fix it later, but just do it. So that in itself was a really good learning was just to, even though I knew it wasn't going to be right and knew it wasn't going to be perfect, it was definitely going to be a lot better than not having anything happen at all. So I had to release that and just let that go. And that's made a big difference. So that's enabled her to get a lot more things happening a lot quicker, 
which means that a lot of things are sitting there almost ready to be finished. They just need me to do a final check over on them. They would have been things that would have taken me months and months more to do. So I'm really grateful to her help and what she's achieved and what she's helped me get happening in my business. I'm very much an advocate of the, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And unfortunately, I think I have been guilty of this numerous times. I often don't do my goals properly. I do some half-assed attempts, but I don't quite finish them off. Don't make them smart and don't have them therefore fully written down and really fully planned out as to how I'm going to achieve them. This was kind of the case with the membership launch. Because it's taken so long and because I was getting so frustrated with myself, I was like, that's it. I have had enough. I'm just going to do it. So what I did was I basically put it out there. I told the universe, I told the world, I said to everyone, right, I am launching my membership on Black Friday. Okay, so I set a date in stone. The reason I did that was because I just wanted the thing up. I just wanted it to happen. Because otherwise things just slip my mind or there's just so much else going on. Everything else competes with it. So I went, no, that's it. I'm going to do it. So I stuck to my guns and on Black Friday I launched. However, was it ready to launch? Hell no. What I hadn't counted on, unfortunately, was a really, really bad run up to that launch. So for a start, I had the initial issue of me not releasing enough of the what I was giving to Cheryl to do so that was holding things up so she literally one week only worked seven hours not because it was only seven hours of work but because it was only seven hours worth of work I could even give her to do so by me taking this extra step out down the track it's enabled me to give her stuff and just say right you go do this 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 and this and I don't have to touch it so I have to do the first piece and then she does a whole bunch and then I just do the end that's it that made life a hell of a lot easier for both of us and that is what has made a big difference to actually getting anywhere. However, my problem was is that I'm still the person that provides the content. I'm still the person that provides the raw material. I'm still the person that's the face of the business. And therefore, I am still a massive bottleneck, particularly when I've got to create new material for things or I haven't given her over yet the editing part of the process. So she's doing the transcriptions, she's doing the blogging, she's doing the uploading into Teachable, but she is not yet doing the editing of the videos because it is a lot of work and it is time consuming and it's just, she's already been inundated with a whole bunch of different programs and software and things. I just didn't want to take it that next step further. So the intention was with the launch on Black Friday that all the onboarding would have been completed, it would have all been, the onboarding course would have been done, the form would have been done, it would have been all ready to go. There was meant to be, the pre-recorded webinars were all meant to be uploaded, all correctly packaged and all that stuff. The new courses, the three or four new courses were meant to be up and ready. The 16 or so tea time tips that had already been completed were meant to be up and ready as well. And what happened? None of, none of that. No courses up there. The tea time tips, yes, there is some of those up there. But we're conscious of the fact that we deliver those for free as well. So, you know, for the membership, we want people to have value. So they do have some additional value, but we're only pricing those at $5 each. So, you know, we want to make sure that the membership has value over and above. So this is where I was getting frustrated at myself. And so therefore I was pushing myself really hard to try and get more stuff happening. Unfortunately, that just wasn't meant to be. So I had some tech issues. So Facebook ads, <laughs> lovely Facebook. Um, fortunately, what they did was they disabled my ads account back in October last year before we were going to run ads for Small Business Month. And they incorrectly, through a glitch in their system back in October last year, disabled my account. Eventually, they admitted that it was their fault. It was a mistake at their end. It was just a glitch. And therefore, sorry, here's your account back. After me, you know, objecting, 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 and nothing happening. So that happened, right? But then they disabled it again. So then about April this year, I was trying to use it to show someone something. Realized it was 
gone again and contacted them again and said, Oi, my account's disabled again. I haven't run any ads. I can't possibly have breached community standards. So anyway, again, they eventually came back and said, yep, we made a mistake. Here's your account back. And of course, when I went to start setting up campaigns a good month or so ago, I realized that the account had been completely disabled and it was unable to be brought back to life because it had been over a year. And it was just gut-wrenching. So I was trying to reach out to other people to get me help to see if they could find some way to contact Facebook so I could run these ads because that was definitely always part of the strategy was to run ads. So unfortunately, that was adding to my stress and strain and issues because I was trying all these different tactics trying to get this to work and it wouldn't work. And so eventually I just put it aside to hard basket. But then I realized that I could run the ads with a pixel through my personal account and therefore why wouldn't I just do that so but by then I hadn't done the groundwork I hadn't done all the work of preparing properly my target audiences what were their interests what were their demographics I really hadn't done the groundwork to make the ads work so the ads were let's face it a failure they were a failure so again learnings is that I didn't invoke what I teach I didn't invoke what I know <laughs> to work and that left it not working well, which was very, very frustrating. So yeah, that, that was life and I will learn from that and I won't repeat the same mistakes again. So that was the Facebook side. Then we had Dear Camtasia. Camtasia is my software editing tool. While I'm doing all this launch, I've also got the regular podcasts happening. And the podcast, when I do it with a guest, I record it through a thing called Zencaster. And I love Zencaster because it enables me to have the video streams separate and the audio streams separate. So that way, if the other end, the person's making a noise or vice versa, you can actually like blank their noise out for that piece, which I love because they're completely separate tracks. So it really works well. It means that when the guest is speaking, I can spotlight them. Then I can put them back down to even playing field, all that sort of thing, right? But unfortunately, it sucks the memory. <laughs> it really just takes so much memory to get this working. So this was another learning curve is that I can't shoot big videos because it was my intention to shoot the entire courses that I was doing, the two hour, two and a half hour courses in pretty much one take. The reason you do that is so that you get nice, even sound across the whole thing. The sound doesn't suddenly gap up and down throughout it because you're creating it all on one and then you're chopping it up into the bite-sized pieces. So I learned, well, that's probably not going to work that well. Although I'm only using the one feed or two feeds because I've got a feed from the screen and then a feed from the camera. So it's only two feeds. It's not quite as much as Zencaster it's still not great. So it's going to suck too much memory from my computer. Let's face it, I'm not running a TV studio here and I just don't have the power behind it. That's going to cause some ongoing friction, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get through that. But the main thing that hampered me, the biggest drama I had was the fact that I got sick. Now, could it be because of all this crazy amount of work I was trying to do? Yeah, probably. And so I'd put a lot of pressure on myself. I'd set that date and I was going to stick to that date, hell or high water. Because I wasn't able to get stuff to Cheryl quick enough, things were kind of getting building up and I was getting freaked out that we only had a couple of weeks left to go. So basically that was when I made the call to go, okay, give her more to do. Don't worry about, you know, making it perfect. Just get it done. So we did that. And then I got these horrible headaches. So right on my left temple, right about here for those watching on the video. Oh my gosh, I was in agony. I was so debilitated and I've had migraines and things, but this was just evil. And something that would take me say, you know, 15 minutes to do was taking me hours and hours and hours to do. It was just such a struggle. I was really fighting it. And because I had to get this done, you know, I'd set this date, I had to do it, I was trying to push through. And honestly, some of those days I really should have just gone, you know what, go have a nap, go swim in the pool or something, go do anything but staring at a screen. 
because one of the other issues I have is my eyes are out of kilter. My focus focal points are quite different. And what that means is that I get really bad headaches and normally. So all this compounds, right? So I had a week, a whole week of this horrific headache and I just couldn't do anything. I was just completely wiped out. It was hopeless. So then to top it off, I'm like, okay, yay, the headache suddenly finally started going away. And I'm thinking, yes, things are getting better. And then I looked at my arms and I had a rash on my arms. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've got allergies. Oh no, what am I allergic to this time? Because I have got lots of allergies. And then I went, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. I know what this is. I've had it once before. And it's actually a stress rash. And clearly because the pressure had been building up, I've got this weird thing where I don't necessarily show that I'm under pressure. I can handle pressure and handle stress really well. And I mean, sure, I blink and lose it sometimes. It's particularly, you know, my partner or something. But often in a work situation or whatever, you wouldn't even know I'm under stress. And that's where like the HBDI profile is kind of interesting because my under pressure profile and my normal profile are almost identical. And so there's not really a perceptible difference in the way that I behave or the way that I think. So this is interesting. So when the rash comes out on the arm, you kind of got to pay attention because it's like, if my body has got to the point where it's actually delivering a rash on my arms to go, Jane, you need to stop, then you kind of need to listen and go, yeah, I need to stop. Time, you know, that is enough. And that's what happened. So I basically got to the point where I got the stress rash. At that point, I just had to decide, okay, that's it. I absolutely cannot deliver any more than I can deliver. I can just only deliver what I can. So I decided to flag trying to get all the courses up and instead get what was already up there. Plus there's a bunch in the pipeline that are on their way. But not worry about the new ones just yet. Focus on them over the next two weeks. But really focus on things like the onboarding, making sure I got that sorted, which I now pretty much have, except for the courses in the pathway, which is going to be updated over time anyway. But it was, again, a big learning because, you know, what's the next step after the stress rash? You know, is it a heart attack, a stroke or something? So, like, I, I take that as a serious indication that that's time to pay attention. So I've paid attention. So I think once I made that call to go, okay, I feel really bad for the people in the membership. I feel really bad, you know, that I couldn't back the membership. So therefore, I really didn't even use all the marketing skills that I know and use and have at my fingertips. I didn't even use any of them. Like I literally only put it out in a few groups, put it on my Facebook pages, on my LinkedIn, Instagram. That was it. That was kind of the extent of my marketing and this half-assed Facebook ad campaign. Email. Oh my gosh, this was even worse. We all know that you're meant to do a launch sequence for, you know, for courses and things. And you're meant to do these eight sequence things and all this stuff. What did I do? As I said, I launched it on Black Friday. On the Sunday, I sent out the first email to my database. Not the Sunday before, the Sunday after launch. Yeah, that's not really very good. Doesn't look so good to people, you know. You're not exactly saying, hey, you're my number one people. Here's your first dibs. Yeah, it didn't look good. But again, I could only do what I could do. And I was really, really, really struggling. And I did what I could. So I eventually got it up. So we got it up. We got it out there. I sent out two emails to my membership. Certainly not the huge channel you meant to. But honestly, I hate those ones which go on and on too much. I'd rather just cut to the chase anyway. So to some extent, they probably would have only got one extra email anyway. What I've done is we now have a membership up. And if we go back to the start of this conversation, back in 2017, that was my intention to have the online school, the online courses and the online membership. Finally, finally, this is happening. So I'm really grateful that I hired Cheryl, that I took on an assistant, that I've outsourced some of this and enabled this to even get started. I'm grateful to the people that signed up to the membership. 
I'm grateful for those that are putting their faith in me and a lot of them know me. So they know the kind of quality of what they're going to get anyway. But they're still taking faith because there's not a huge amount in there at the moment, which is very frustrating for me, not what I wanted to deliver. So thankfully, though, by making that call to just ease back and only do what I could do, the rash, thankfully, has gone. So my body is going, okay, we've de-stressed enough (laughs) to be in somewhat of a more normal state. However, new headaches have happened. So more attention headache, just an annoying lack of sleep type of headache. Still doing far too many late nights, still got way behind on everything. So November basically ended up becoming a bit of a write-off. I was that behind where I actually had some clients that I'd had meetings with on the 2nd of November that I hadn't even recorded their meeting in the system. Like, it was that crazy. I hadn't invoiced for the entire month of November. Like, I was that behind. So I think that really puts into perspective what was going on in my world. It was just too much. Other things happening in the world, (laughs) lots of family gatherings, which I hadn't been able to go to until November because I only got vaxxed at the end of October, you know, and it's just been really, really hard work. So I'm really grateful that the membership is up. I'm really grateful some people have actually invested in the program. And I promise those people I am going to give you great value. Even though it's not what I wanted to deliver up front, it is still going to be great value. I'm going to add to those people over time so anyone can join right now and it's still a great deal. But I will do a secondary launch in Small Business Month in March. Also, I've got an expo then so it makes sense to kind of do something in line with that. They will not get the same deal, however, that the foundation members got. The foundation members will always be treated with extra special attention because they put everything on the line and they joined when there wasn't really a lot to join for. So I really, really just want to say so much thank you to them. And just to say that, yes, this was a failure to launch. Let's face it. Was there a whole bunch of stuff that went on behind the scenes? Hell yes. And I think that whole point of getting to the stress rash and things was just enough to go you know what there's more to life than business there's more to life than delivering and sometimes you just have to make that call to pull the pin or pull it back and I'm glad I stuck to the date I'm not glad it's not where I want it to be but it will be and it will be soon so that's part of the reason that the podcast is going on hold for a month because that gives us a month to get everything up to speed in the membership and just get everything feeling things are back on track and giving me a little bit of a chance probably to have a little few days off. And I mean probably a few, but we will have a few days off. But what this has also taught me and reminded me, failure to plan is a plan to fail. Hell yes. Don't do the foundation work. Don't expect to get results. If you don't execute properly, yeah, don't execute properly and things won't happen. But most importantly, at the end of the day, without you... There is no business that you run. There is no work that you do. There's no people that you can serve. So at the end of the day, when your body, like mine, tells you it's going into shutdown mode, you do have to pay attention and listen. So I did learn a lot from my launch. And even though it was a bit of a failure to launch, it definitely was a first attempt in learning. I am grateful, though, that I'm going to be able to use the people that are in the membership to really test it out to explore it further and make sure that it is actually delivering exactly what they want and make sure it's delivering to various levels. We've got different people from different backgrounds, different size businesses, some multi-location, lots of staff, some, you know, sole trader and some in between. So that's good. I can test it out and make sure that everyone is catered for or I can go, okay, you know what, actually I'm better catering for this market. But ultimately... This is called the FAQBT Business Growth Membership for a reason, because I want to grow these businesses. I want them to help grow mine and for me to help grow theirs. So I truly hope that despite this little setback, that this is the start of something amazing. Thank you for tuning in today. 
And I look forward to seeing you again next week on the FAQ Business Podcast. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the FAQ Business Podcast, available on all good podcast services. You can subscribe today via faqbusinesspodcast.com.au or directly on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio or Spotify. Subscribe, follow, share and where able, review our podcast or leave us a comment on either YouTube or our blog page. Thanks for helping us to help you, the small to medium businesses who are growing and want to make a difference. Look forward to connecting with you again on the next episode of the FAQ Business Podcast. <music>